Anbang Insurance Group, an obscure name for many, yet it loomed significantly in the annals of too-big-to-fail corporations. Hailing from China, Anbang was a powerhouse in the insurance, banking, and financial services industries. Once crowned as one of China's most colossal companies, the firm declared a stunning asset value of over 1.9 trillion renminbi, equivalent to over 301 billion US dollars in 2017. Anbang's portfolio teemed with notable assets both within China's borders and on the international scene. Perhaps one of its most recognizable acquisitions was the prestigious Waldorf Astoria, New York, purchased for a staggering $2 billion. This company was even a key player in the consortium that boldly tendered a $14 billion offer to acquire Starwood Hotels and Resorts in 2016, a deal that ultimately fell through. It is important to appreciate that Anbang was far from a fledging enterprise. Its remarkable ascendancy, however, was met with an equally stunning downfall. In 2020, this financial titan, once boasting over $300 billion in assets, had been dissolved and liquidated, which sparks the eyes of those who don't even know this company exists. It's a fascinating narrative, and yet it remains largely unheard of. How did such a tale escape the public eye? Let's delve into the intriguing saga of Anbang and unearth its hidden narrative. Anbang was not an ordinary company. It was one of the most potent symbols of China's rise as a global financial powerhouse. Just imagine this, from its inception in 2004, the firm took only a decade to become a global player in insurance and financial services. This journey from relative obscurity to one of the largest insurance groups in the world was nothing short of phenomenal. Anbang started as a regional car insurance firm. However, under the leadership of Wu Xiaohui, the company quickly diversified its offerings. It expanded into life insurance, banking, asset management, and even financial leasing. By 2010, Anbang had attracted substantial domestic attention with its aggressive growth strategy. But it was the period between 2014 to 2016 that marked Anbang's golden era. In these two years, the company embraced embarked on a global acquisition spree, spending more than $18 billion. Anbang's shopping list included some of the world's most iconic properties. The Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York, a veritable icon of luxury, was one of them. Purchased for a record $1.95 billion in 2015, this deal signaled Anbang's arrival on the world stage. Following the Waldorf Astoria deal, Anbang made another series of high-profile purchases. It acquired strategic hotels and resorts from the Blackstone Group for about $6.5 billion, adding 16 luxury U.S. hotels to its portfolio. They acquired Dutch insurer Vivat for 150 million euros and agreed to infuse roughly around 1 billion euros in fresh capital to the company. They also acquired Real for 1.48 billion dollars in 2015. Within China, they too had acquired some stakes in several other major assets. They acquired the China Merchant Bank in 2013 for $2 billion and Sino Ocean for $1.5 billion in 2015. Anbang even attempted a $14 billion bid for Starwood Hotels and Resorts worldwide, which, if successful, would have been the largest Chinese takeover of a U.S. company. Although the Starwood deal eventually fell through, Anbang's willingness to splurge underscored its ambitious global aspirations. All of this was steered by Anbang's enigmatic chairman, Wu Xiaohui. Wu was a man of modest origins, hailing from a rural Chinese province. However, he had a talent for building connections, a trait that played a crucial role in Anbang's rise. He married Zhuo Ran, the granddaughter of Deng Xiaoping, China's paramount leader from 1978 to 1989. This connection placed Wu in the inner circle of China's elite, a position that undoubtedly worked to his advantage. Wu was seen as a bold, ambitious figure in China's corporate world, one who was not afraid to take risks. His leadership style was characterized by a relentless drive to expand and diversify Anbang's business. Under Wu's watch, Anbang's workforce grew to over 30,000 employees, and the company had a formidable presence in more than a dozen countries. 
Indeed, Anbang's growth was jaw-dropping. In a little over a decade, it transformed from a modest car insurance business to a global behemoth, with assets exceeding $310 billion. But as we know now, this remarkable ascent was not without its problems. The first signs of trouble emerged in 2017, shortly after the high-profile acquisitions and failed bid for Starwood Hotels. Regulators in both the US and China began taking a closer look at Anbang and its financial practices. This scrutiny revealed a convoluted corporate structure with over 100 subsidiaries held together through a series of complex and often opaque transactions. In many ways, Anbang's rapid expansion had come at the expense of transparency and accountability. Regulators weren't the only ones concerned. Investors, too, were growing nervous about the company's solvency. Anbang had funded its global shopping spree through an aggressive sale of high-yield investment products to Chinese consumers. These products, often sold through the company's vast network of sales agents, promised much higher returns than traditional bank deposits. The catch, however, was that these returns were reliant on Anbang's ability to continually bring in new investors. Reminiscent of a classic Ponzi scheme, the scale was mind-boggling. In March of 2016, Anbang had reported that it raised an estimated $5.8 billion through these investment products, 48 times what they were a year before. But as investor sentiment soured, the risk of a potential run on Anbang's investment products grew, which would have been catastrophic for the company's finances. But it wasn't just financial irregularities that spelled trouble for Anbang. In June 2017, Wu Xiaohui was detained by Chinese authorities for what was initially described as economic crimes. This sudden and dramatic development took many by surprise, not least because of Wu's political connections. His arrest marked a significant escalation in the Chinese government's efforts to clamp down on financial risk and corporate misbehavior. In the following months, as Wu languished in detention, the Chinese government seized control of Anbang, citing serious economic risks in the company's operations. In April 2018, Wu was found guilty of fundraising fraud and embezzlement and sentenced to 18 years in prison. The following month, the government officially announced Anbang's bankruptcy. For many, the fall of Anbang and Wu Xiaohui signaled a broader shift in China's economic landscape. The government, under President Xi Jinping, had grown increasingly concerned about the risks associated with unchecked corporate expansion. Anbang's fate seemed to serve as a stark warning to other Chinese conglomerates, rein in your global ambitions or face the consequences. But the story of Anbang and Wu Xiaohui isn't just about corporate excess and regulatory failure. It also reveals much about the changing nature of China's economic policy and its implications for the global financial system. And while Anbang may be a cautionary tale of what happens when ambition oversteps its bounds, its legacy continues to reverberate through China's economy and beyond. After the seizure of Anbang by the Chinese government, an urgent need arose to stabilize the company and protect the interest of its policyholders. A massive injection of 60.8 billion yuan, or about $9.66 billion from China's insurance security fund, was undertaken to ensure liquidity. At the same time, the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission took over the company's operations for a year, which was later extended. In 2020, the government's efforts to reform Anbang began in earnest. They established Dajia Insurance Group, a new company, to take over Anbang's assets. Dajia's mandate was to handle Anbang's insurance business and ensure the interest of its policyholders were protected. In other words, Dajia would be the entity tasked with cleaning up the Anbang mess. As for Anbang's numerous international assets, these were slowly but surely sold off. One of these was its luxury hotel portfolio to a South Korean buyer, which it sold for $5.8 billion in 2019. These include the Westin St. Francis in San Francisco to the Four Seasons in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and such. In the years since Anbang's fall from grace, the company's once extensive international portfolio has been drastically reduced. The shockwaves of Anbang's failure were felt across China's financial system. Anbang's downfall raised questions about the stability and oversight of the country's fast-growing financial sector, particularly around the insurance industry. 
In response, Chinese regulators began to tighten regulations and increase scrutiny of insurers' investments, particularly in the property sector and overseas assets. The case also underscored the Chinese government's growing concerns about financial risk, particularly in the private sector. In the years since Anbang's bankruptcy, Beijing has taken a more hands-on approach to managing the country's economic growth and cracking down on corporate misbehavior. Internationally, Anbang's scandal and subsequent bankruptcy created uncertainty about Chinese investments worldwide. It demonstrated the potential risks of opaque corporate structures, aggressive expansion strategies, and the potential for government intervention in Chinese firms. This has, to some extent, contributed to a shift in the perception of Chinese overseas investment. But while the tale of Anbang is one of a spectacular rise and fall, it's also a cautionary tale about the need for greater transparency, better risk management, and improved corporate governance. The lessons learned from the Anbang scandal continue to resonate in the global business community and among financial regulators worldwide. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.